now the establishment seem to have gotten hold of a fighting instrument in the hands of our people, the ANC. And then he says that Umkondo will seize there has to be a platform that unites all the progressive forces. If your ideology is to believe in the Congress movement in the Freedom Charter, you are welcome in Umkondo will seize. If your ideology and beliefs and politics associated with the pan-Africanist of Azania politics or pan-Africanism in general. You are welcome in Mkonto season. If your ideological outlook is associated with black consciousness, you are welcome in Mkonto season. If you think that the immediate aim is economic freedom in our lifetime, you are welcome in Mkonto season. That all the progressive forces must be united the only requirement is that all of us must be united on the anti-colonial, anti-apartheid, anti-racist agenda, which is going to bring back our land, which is going to bring back our natural resources, our economy, so that we can run the economy for the benefit of the indigenous and black people. That is the agenda at the center of Umkondoesis politics. So unity is at the center, is the defining future of the politics of Umukonto in season. And that is what we seek to achieve. And if you want to unite people, your conduct, the manner in which you conduct your politics, must demonstrate that you are really genuine about the unification of the people. The type of language that you use the manner in which you relate with people inside the organization yeah. and outside the organization will determine whether you are at the center of unification of our people. Yeah. That is why, that is why one of the values in the commit commitments, you must make sure that you fulfill those commitments. And if you have failed to do so, you must go back to the people to explain what happened. And in terms of respect, he emphasizes that let us not insult anyone, including political opponents, even when they provoke us. That you can't call yourself an activist a leader, a member of Mkonto is season. And when we are given a platform, we want to speak about the body parts of other people's leaders. And you want to speak about their intellectual capacity. What would Mkonto is the gain if we were to? Every time we speak, we say, no, these ones are stupid. This one is a dumb cop. And then later on, we want to unify these people behind one agenda. Yeah. And you're talking about adults with children. Hey. Characterizing them with all sorts of names. Hey. And later on, you say, no, as black progressive forces, we must unite. And these are the people that we must talk to. Yeah. So Mkondo is is founded on the principle of respect. And, 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 and what is good about this principle is that it also finds expression in the code of conduct as well that it will be a disciplinary issue to disrespect any person, even a general member of the public, you are not allowed. That is what defines the organization. The other principle is the organic form of representation that all activists, all leaders of Mkondo and Caesar must be organic, must be guided by familiarity, must by knowledge of what is happening in their communities. So you can't be in the legislature or in the parliament and then you go to say in your speech that no, according to the Daily Sun or according to Statistics South Africa, there is no water in Mshara Lingana and Josie and Mtuwatu. When you speak, you must be making a proper relatable story that I was in Tubatuba yesterday, I was in Tabisa yesterday, yes. I was in this area and I know the people do not have water. 
you should speak with authority on things that you know, not things that you have read in social media. That is the organic nature and character that we should build of Umukondo in season. The other principle and value is the principle of meritocracy and knowledgeability that as leaders we should be knowledgeable. We should understand what we stand for, we should know the areas where we come from. Yeah. So that we are able to provide proper solutions. Comrades, we are going to be doing a, a lot of induction and constant discussions about the politics of Umkondo in season. So we had started the program in Limpompo and in Pumalanga, and then the president says, no, you can't continue with those programs because I want to be part of these provincial programs as well. Because some people might think that you are just speaking yourselves and representing yourselves. I want to be the one who comes to all the provinces to explain the constitution of Mkonto in season. So that those who say, no, we only listen to Baba must listen from me and hear that this is what I'm saying. And there is, no, and there is none of the sections that I am stating in this constitution. You know, when the first draft of the constitution was drafted, Viva MK Youth League Viva! So, when the first section, when the first draft was, when the first draft was presented, the proposal when the president says, tell me what defines youth? Do you want a 14 year old and a 35 year old to belong in one organization, which is a preparatory school? How are they relatable? Because majority of people above the age of 30, they are fully established adults with children and many other obligations and responsibilities. And he says that we as Umkotoesis, we are not getting what are the voices of the youth now. We are not getting clearly what is the political agenda of the generation we call my 2000. Because they don't have a political voice. And naturally, if you group them in one organization with people who are far much older, who are 20 years older than them, the ones who are older than them will be dominant because they've got experience. Let's create a youth organization which will express the interest and aspirations of young people. In a true form, that is the, the guidance that we got to receive. When President Zuma was 20 years old, he was a fully fledged freedom fighter. He was sent to Ruin Island at the age of 20. Before he was 35, he was in the National Executive Committee of the ANC in exile. And then he says that perhaps we made a mistake as those of us who came from exile because when we came back, we said that youth is up, the, up, up until the age of 35 and then you have got adults who are above 30 towards 35 behaving like they are young people when they are not young of 30. And that was the guidance of the president and there is no one who is going to create any other fictional explanation. Those who are in the National High Command will tell you. And those who came to say they are seeking explanation, he said, let come, let us meet outside. The, for, the former youth league convener from Lower South Coast from Oak was there. <laughs> He explained the whole day, he said, he even asked, how many of you have got children and everyone else was raising their hand? <laughs> so let's stop any imagination that there was some 
conspiracy to exclude people. There's no conspiracy, it's a political discussion. And a political conclusion raised within political context as to what kind of a youth movement do we need in Mkonto in season? The other issue, comrades, is that there is purposefully no conference, elective conference, in the constitution of Mkonto in season. Because we know the nature and character of conferences thus far. They are used as instruments of division. They are used as instruments to buy political parties and their direction. And President Zuma says that this organization is not for sale. We know that when you call a conference, they're going to sponsor candidates. We are going to preside over you because they have accommodated people in fancy hotels and so on and so forth, like, try to confuse them. Before you know it, they will be changing the agenda of Mkonto and season. They will be asking, what is this thing that we need the land? Can't we just raise money somewhere and go and buy the land? It says to protect the integrity of the organization. Let's move away from these elective conferences because the experience thus far is that conferences are used for role on social media, for instance, we're saying, why is president of Mkonto is having so much powers? Do you know the powers of the president in this constitution as compared to the powers which he had? As a head of state and president, it's nothing. As head of state and president, he had the power to appoint all ministers, the power to appoint all directors general, the power to appoint all judges, to even appoint and nominate a constitutional court uh, head, the chief justice, the power to appoint army generals, the power to go to war without consulting anyone. Why would we distrust President Zuma with just administrative powers of appointing provincial conveners and coordinators? <laughs> when we know that he has got the experience, he has always utilized political power responsibly. So it's not a mistake that everything else that is in this constitution it's not a mistake, it's a well thought process as to what is to be achieved. And there are, there are so many things, comrades, which will give proper narrative and explanation of, which many people do not get to appreciate. It speaks here about the economic sovereignty. When President Zuma was president and head of state, and sometimes some of us were even misled, he understood that for a country to have full economic sovereignty or independence, you need to have energy sovereignty in terms of where is the source of your energy. Against all odds, he attempted to come with a nuclear build project, which there is nothing wrong with a nuclear build project. Nuclear is the cleanest source of energy, is the most reliable. Welcome to LT Celeb Times. That's it for now, guys. And uh, please tell us what you think about this on the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching.